The United States has led the world in stealth aviation since its very inception, with four publicly disclosed stealth platforms that either have been or are in service, and at least three more at some stage of development. But if you think America's got a lot of publicly disclosed stealth jets, you should see how many it keeps secret. Let's dive into the declassified stealth prototypes and technology demonstrators that you may not have ever heard of. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. After a few weeks on the road, I am glad to be back in my office, but I had a blast last week in Washington, D.C. I got to go to the Pentagon and meet Sergeant Major Black, the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, which was an incredible honor. Not to mention the time I got to spend talking with legendary Marine leaders, like retired General John Sattler, who led the Battle of Fallujah, and retired General Ray Smith, who is not only a co-founder of Sandbox, but is a genuine Vietnam war hero who came home with a navy cross, two silver stars, a bronze star, and three purple hearts for his trouble. But I would be lying if I said I wasn't exhausted, so I figured this week we'd try something a bit light-hearted and just talk about some of the more unusual stealth prototypes and technology demonstrators the U.S. has operated over the years that don't frequently get discussed. As you may already know, for every F-22 Raptor, F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, or B-2 Spirit, there are a number of stealth jets that never find their way into operational hangars, either because of program cancellations or, often, because they were never really intended for combat service at all. Sometimes these programs aim to prove advanced new technological concepts, or test classified new systems, or prove the efficacy of a capability that's meant for inclusion in another forthcoming aircraft. But because of the very nature of stealth, these technology demonstrators and prototypes are usually developed under the utmost levels of secrecy. The F-117 Nighthawk, as one famous example, was operational for at least five years before the American government would even acknowledge its existence. Likewise, prototypes, technology demonstrators, and even programs that are meant for service but canceled for various reasons often remain shrouded in mystery for years, even after they stop flying. These efforts are commonly referred to as black programs, and the Pentagon has a long and illustrious history of funding the classified development of advanced technologies in this way. Today, the most secretive efforts fall under what we commonly call Special Access Programs, or SAPs, which limit the distribution of information even among those with the highest reaching security clearances. But even within the world of SAPs or SAPs, there remains another, even murkier designation unacknowledged SAPs or USAPs. These efforts are so secretive that briefings are kept off paper and delivered by word of mouth only to the highest levels of government. As we discussed recently in our coverage of the legends surrounding the Aurora reconnaissance aircraft, many of these planes may never be revealed at all. But while a few of these highly secretive stealth aircraft have managed to peek out from behind the black budget barrier, some of them might have still slipped beneath your radar. So let's talk about them. And we're going to start with what might be my favorite looking aircraft of all time, Boeing's Bird of Prey. During the 1990s, a team of engineers from McDonnell Douglas's Phantom Works developed and tested this unique stealth platform shrouded in the secrecy of Area 51. Today, it's known as the Bird of Prey, but at the time, it was usually called the YF-118G. Now, this program wasn't aiming for operational service, but elements of the design and its production process are still working their way into Uncle Sam's hangars to this very day. Maybe the most lasting contribution that this incredible and really exotic looking airplane made to America's defense apparatus was in its sheer audacity and subsequent success. While most stealth The bird of prey went from a pad of paper to the skies over Groom Lake for less than the cost of a single F-35 today. 
The entire program from start to finish cost McDonnell Douglas and then Boeing after the merger just $67 million. This thing was not a fighter. It was powered by a single Pratt & Whitney JT-15D 5C turbofan engine that was actually just yanked out of a Cessna business jet. It produced just 3,190 pounds of thrust, so we're not talking about a supersonic platform here. But the Bird of Prey did prove that Boeing had the chops to produce a stealth aircraft, while also advancing technologies tied to rapid prototyping and particularly single-pieced composite material construction, which is a huge deal for stealth aircraft because, as we've talked about in the past, seams can really ruin your stealth profile. The aircraft was definitely budget-minded. The ejection seat came from an AV-8B Harrier. The control stick came from an F-A-18 Hornet. The rudder pedals came from an A-4 Skyhawk. Air Force test pilot Colonel Doug Benjamin even joked about it, saying the clock was from Walmart and the environmental control system was essentially a hairdryer. It might have been cheap, but it was also stealthy. In fact, its name, Bird of Prey, was a direct reference to the Klingon Bird of Prey from Star Trek, which, if you're not familiar with, has a cloaking device. Its performance did leave something to be desired. It could cruise at around 300 miles per hour, which is slower than a C-130, and its maximum operational ceiling was 20,000 feet, which was about half as high as a P-51 Mustang. But if you ask me what it lacked in performance, it made up for with style. And this plane had 40 successful flights between 1996 and 1999, all of which took place at Area 51, or Groom Lake. It was eventually declassified and revealed on October 18th of 2002, and now the Bird of Prey lives in the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. You can actually see it hanging right above an F-22 Raptor. Up next is a platform that actually was meant to make it to service, and if it had, it would have been the world's first stealth fighter. I'm talking about the McDonnell Douglas A-12 Avenger II. Back on January 13th, 1988, a joint team from McDonnell Douglas and General Dynamics was awarded a development contract for what was to become the A-12 Avenger II, not to be confused with Lockheed's A-12 from the 1960s. Once completed, this Navy A-12 would have been a flying wing design slightly reminiscent of Northrop Grumman's B-2 Spirit or the forthcoming B-21 Raider, but much smaller and with sharper angles. The sharp triangular shape of the A-12 actually eventually earned it the nickname the Flying Dorito. Now, we've already talked plenty of times about how Lockheed's F-117 Nighthawk was really an attack aircraft that was just given a fighter F prefix and the informal moniker of Stealth Fighter. The F-117 really had no real air-to-air -air capabilities. I know there's been a lot of talk lately about how the F-117 could have had an air-to-air -air mission if you armed it with AIM-9 infrared-guided missiles, but the truth is it was never even tested to go after AWACS in this way. It's just a hypothetical possibility. It really was not a fighter. The Navy wasn't about any of this chicanery, and they decided to saddle their aircraft with an A prefix to demonstrate its use against ground targets, despite it actually having onboard radar and the ability to engage air targets with two internally stored AIM-120 AMRAAM air-to-air missiles. In other words, the A-12 Avenger II would have actually been a stealth fighter, but the Navy just decided not to call it that. By 1991, however, the A-12 was overweight, over budget, and behind schedule, leading to its unceremonious cancellation, which would pave the way for Lockheed to later propose an F-117N Seahawk and then eventually field the F-35C. Now, if I had to guess that there's one that you may not have heard of before, I'd say it'll probably be this next one. Boeing's Model 85321 Quiet Bird. This largely forgotten prototype stealth aircraft actually predates the Have Blue's first flight by nearly a decade and a half. The effort began as a study into developing a low observable aircraft to serve as an observation plane for the U.S. Army. Throughout 1962 and 63, Boeing experimented with stealth aircraft design concept for the Quiet Bird, incorporating different shapes and construction materials in an effort to reduce the jet's radar cross-section. 
This was long before Dennis Overholser at the Skunk Works would develop the means to accurately calculate an RCS without having to actually build a model of the aircraft and stick it in front of a radar array. This aircraft never actually flew. It was tested out on Boeing's Wichita radar range. And believe it or not, despite having a lot of success with reducing its radar cross-section, as Boeing puts it, the military just wasn't interested. I guess they hadn't heard what a big deal stealth would be in a few more decades. While the Quiet Bird may have been a bit ahead of its time, Boeing says that the effort wasn't a waste. A lot of what they learned on the Quiet Bird ended up informing the way they designed their AGM-86 air-launched cruise missile, which would enter service about 10 years later. And the last one on our list today may also be the weirdest. I'm talking about NASA and Boeing's X-36 tailless fighter agility research aircraft. Just like the Bird of Prey, the X-36 was not about fielding a new stealth fighter for combat, so much as maturing the technologies that may eventually find their way there. As we've discussed in the past, today's stealth fighters are extremely difficult to target, but they're not actually all that tough to spot or track using even dated radar arrays that are tuned to a low frequency. Because of the performance requirements of a fighter, jets like the F-35 and F-22 need things like large jet inlets and vertical tail surfaces, things that can be omitted by less aerobatic stealth platforms like the B-2 Spirit. These elements of fighter design can be designed not to compromise a jet's low observability against high-frequency targeting arrays, but they tend to produce a resonance that can be picked up by low-frequency early warning radars. The X-36 was designed to fly without the empennage, or tail assembly, that can be a real trouble spot when it comes to defeating low-frequency detection for fighters. Now, unlike the other aircraft on this list, the X-36 was not a full-sized platform. It was actually a 28% scale model of a full-sized fighter that measured just 19 feet long. It used a canard forward of the wing, split ailerons, and thrust vector control to help compensate for that missing tail. Now, if you're not familiar with thrust vector control, it's effectively the ability to orient the jet's exhaust independent of the aircraft itself. And in normal fighter platforms like the F-22 or Russia's Su-35, it allows for some incredible aerobatic maneuvers. But in a tailless aircraft like the X-36, it could also be used to help compensate for that lack of stability and control that you're missing by removing those vertical and horizontal control surfaces. Its forward canards also helped provide stability, and we've seen similar designs implemented in other stealth aircraft like China's J-20 Mighty Dragon. Now, there have been no subsequent aircraft to draw direct links to the X-36 program, and I can hear you asking why I would even bother including it when it was just a small-scale model that was piloted by remote control. Well, the truth is, I included it because all of the official renders that we've seen come out of the Air Force's Next Generation Air Dominance, and the Navy's FAXX fighter programs in development all seem to show fighters without an empennage, or conventional tail surfaces. And that means that the X-36's legacy may still be shrouded in secrecy and may yet manifest in the next generation of stealth fighters. And that'll just about do it for this week's edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I promise, next week I'll be back to full speed. In the meantime, here's my outro spiel. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure you swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.